Okay, I thought I was done with the preterism videos, but I'm really not. I need to explain what underlies preterism and gives it its fuel. Really, the first cause and the primary uh, fuel is anti-Semitism. But abetting the anti-Semitism is a misunderstanding. And it's kind of hard. It's almost chicken and egg. I'm not sure which comes first. What do I mean by that? There is a misunderstanding in the bulk of Christendom about the difference between um, what happened post-cross and what life was pre-cross. I've spent the better part of 10 years documenting that. Um, but I'm going to try, <laughs> with limited success, to explain it here. First, I'm going to go through their misunderstanding, which gives rise to what is called, and you can Google on it, replacement theology. Then I'm going to go through, oh, I hope really quickly, um, what really happened. And once you see the, the fact that they misunderstand so much, you'll understand that replacement theology is retarded, and that's what gives birth to preterism. Okay, but this is a, this is a massive task to try to cover in just a few minutes of video, where people largely have a, a you know an attention span of five minutes, you know, and they're all loyal to your doctor so and so who's totally incompetent, and so they're not going to want to watch it to start with. So here we go. They're hanging the replacement people say that. We replace Israel basically based on all this. Okay? Really starts here in verse 6. Goes all the way down here, and, and you can continue it farther. This is what they're hanging their hand on, what's highlighted in blue on the left. That, well, we're the sons of Abraham because we believe like Abraham did. Yeah. But you're not that kind of son, are you? Your belief is one of the things that's a characteristic of Abraham. Abraham wasn't simply what he believed. Abraham had a body, and that body reproduced. And specifically, that body's pro, you know, um, descendants one of the body descendants of Abraham was Christ. Christ was a Jew. Yes, he paid for our salvation. And this is what Paul is talking about here in Ephesians 2 on the right. Okay. All right. In other words, back in the days when there were just the Jews, they were the ones to carry the message. Because of Abraham, the Jews were a people. The Jews became a nation. They became a covenanted nation under God. They were the covenanted nation under God for 2,000 years. From them came the Christ, who is a Jew. And the Christ decided in Matthew 16, 18, to create a new covenanted people that had not existed yet, called church. Matthew 16, 18. Every Calvinist knows that. The Catholics try to claim that, that Peter is the head of the church using that same verse, but that's not what it says. What it says is far more important. Christ is creating a brand new group, de novo, that has its own covenant. That's his declaration. And then he prayed for Father in John 17 to determine who would be in that church. It's a separate deal. Now, uh, the text in highlighted in blue on the right is saying that we were far off, Old Testament, only the Jews. In order to believe in Christ, if you believed in Christ, you had to become a Jew. You converted. That was the way it was until Christ. Post-cross, because of what he did on the cross, 
which was not only pain for all the, the sins you know that had gone on before but pain for the ones yet to occur because there were no people yet to be born that's us so the highlighted text on the right it's also Bible okay is saying that he brought the Gentiles in. There were like 900 prophecies in the Old Testament about how he would do that. And they're all linked to the New Covenant in Jeremiah 31. Okay? Jeremiah is an update on Isaiah. Isaiah was the primary guy who talked about the prophecies to the Gentiles. He wasn't the only one, but he was primary. So the text on the right is talking about all those Old Testament prophecies about grafting in the Gentiles so that now and that's the theme of Galatians I can't show you all the Bible books at once I just got to talk about them look at the, the text highlighted in blue on the right he made both groups into one that's verse 14 first part of the blue highlighting on the right he made the Jews and the Gentiles into one into himself and broke down what? The barrier of the dividing wall. That barrier of the dividing wall is talking about a specific cultural thing. It's kind of like a line at the airport where you got one special line for the first class passengers and another line for everybody else. The Jews were the first class passengers and the Gentiles were everybody else. So if you wanted to become a first class passenger, you had to believe in Christ and convert to Judaism. That was Old Testament. That's not the New Testament. The New Testament is a different covenant, which is the entire theme of the book of Hebrews. It is a new covenant. It is a different covenant. It is not the same covenant as the Jews had. So the left hand side, highlighted in blue, is Paul explaining the change of covenant. But if you're anti-Semitic, you don't want to accept that. If you're anti-Semitic, you want to say that you replace the Jews and you are going to play games with what the New Covenant is. But you're going to say that all the promises to the Jews, because of the text highlighted in blue on the left, are now going to church because, oh, the Jews are Christ killers. You see, you can't afford to look at one section of the Bible on the left and ignore the section of the Bible on the right. And it's not just those verses in the Bible on the right. It's the whole book of Hebrews. It's the whole book of Colossians. Actually, it's the whole book of Ephesians too. Ephesians 2 is talking about two covenants being united in Christ. Two covenants. See? He made both into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. That's telling you that you don't have to become a Jew to inherit the promise, which is on the left-hand side. you got a different covenant. Paul is the apostle of the new covenant. That's the topic of... Oh, my mouse is getting stuck. I can't show it that way. Oh, well, I'll have to reboot. Starting up in the next 